Let's take a look at what's been going on over here in Dadeville, Alabama. A 12-year-old girl was found walking up the road. Now, with this has opened a whole can of worms. Let's listen to see what has been going on over here. And today I am joined by AL.com reporter Carol Robinson. And Carol is here today to explain a story that we have all been talking about in the last day or so. And it's a bizarre story about how the kidnapping of a 12-year-old girl has led investigators to a home with two decomposing bodies. Now, Carol... Two decomposing bodies. Now, as of right now, they are not releasing any names of who the perpetrator was, who the victim was, or who these other two victims are. Carol, this story made national news when it was broken the other day. And again, this all happened on Monday, but kind of walk me through the way that this story unfolded. And then we'll talk a little bit about the investigation and the new details you're learning. Sure. It began Monday morning about eight, just a little before 8.30 a.m. when a motorist was driving, you know, in rural Dadeville and, and saw a- Thank God for people who see children walking up the road and decide, hey, there's something wrong with this and pull over. 12 year old girl walking alone on the side of the roadway. Something obviously made her seem that felt that something was wrong and she stopped and picked up the girl. And that sort of just opened the whole investigation into, you know, where she had been, um, which led them to the suspect's trailer, which was not far, far away from where she was found. And Trigger warning. If you are faint of heart as to things that some children have been put through please back up out of this feed back out of this video and inside they found two decomposing bodies um the suspect was gone he was arrested overnight monday night by auburn police and u.s marshals in auburn um and he is now back in tallapoosa county uh, obviously being held without bond uh, so the there should be no bond for people like this. Suspect again was not very far from this mobile home at the time he was arrested, just in Auburn from rural Dadeville. And also, one thing before we get a little bit more into this investigation, tell us, did that 12-year-old girl, now we do know, uh, they've not released a lot of details about her or her identity because she is a minor, but they did say that she is safe right now and she is physically uh, okay at the moment. So, Physically okay. Physically okay. There's a big difference in physically okay and mentally okay. Did that 12-year-old lead authorities to the trailer? That That is our assumption. They haven't said that. What we did learn from court documents is that this all began on July 24th. Um, and that, that this 12-year-old girl had been tied to a bed for most of the week. Um, Again, trigger warning. Trigger warning. So far... This 12-year-old had been tied to a bed. She had chewed her way. She had been given alcohol to keep her in a drug state, is what the records say, and was able to chew her way through her restraints to break free. Um, <clears throat> so much so that, it, it, according to the court records, it damaged her braces on her teeth. Chewed her way through her restraints until it damaged her braces. Teeth. So she had gotten out, um, you know, we don't know what, what she heard and saw, but we can only imagine that it was, it was pretty horrific. Um, we suspect, assume that she told authorities, you know, that she had been at this trailer and, and that is what led them there. <clears throat> we have new court records today. Um, as we know, he's, the suspect has also been charged with Two, three counts of capital murder and two counts of abuse of a corpse. Just released court records within the last few minutes show that those victims are appear to be an adult female and then another child. Um, he is. What kind of sicko? What kind of sicko are we dealing with here? Charged with capital murder during a kidnapping, capital murder of a child under the age of 14 and capital murder for two or more people in one act. And still going through those records, because like I said, they literally came out just before we started. Um, <clears throat> the corpse abuse will be 
leaving them there and, and the decomposition. Well, and again, I know this is new information as well from the story that you had already published about that 12-year-old being uh, restrained and being tied to a bed and again, chewing her way through her restraints to the point that it damaged her braces. That is new information that you've learned here. I hope he never, ever gets out of prison. Ever. Ever. Through court records. Carol, this sounds like something out of a horror story. I think people have only ever read about these things, uh, maybe online or in books, and it's have a little bit jarring, I think, for a lot of people, especially who live in East Alabama, to realize that this was happening just right maybe down the road from them. It, it, it jars any of us that lives anywhere in the state of Alabama. Okay. And we still don't know, you know, what the relationship is between uh, Pascal Reyes and his victims. Um, Pascal Reyes. Authorities are pretty tight-lipped at this point with, you know, with good reason. They've got a lot to investigate. I wonder um, if he's one of Biden's illegals. I think that the 12-year-old girl was related to this woman and this child because no one had reported her missing. And, you know, you can't... No reports on a missing 12-year-old child. Presume, educated guess, that if she was not related to these victims, then somebody would have been missing her. That's but we good, don't know what the suspect's relationship to any of them are at this point. That's a good point there. And we should say, again, the suspect, his name is Jose Paulino Pascal Reyes, and he is a 37-year-old man, again, who lived not far from where that 12-year-old was found by the passing motorist on County Road 34 in rural Daneville. Now, Carol, again, I know authorities are being really tight-lipped about this. You're really learning a lot from court records here. But do we know about the condition of that 12-year-old when the motorist passed by? Obviously, there was a reason that motorist stopped and, and was able to say something is wrong here and call police. Right. Do we know the condition of that 12-year-old? We, we don't know. They have not said and I have not been able to do a deep dive into the records yet except to say that you know, she had been drugged for much of the week, and again, that drug was believed to be alcohol. Um, we can presume that there was probably some still in her system when she was found, because, you know, 12 is young, but not young enough to be walking on a road by yourself, depending, you know, on the road. So I think there had to have been something that caused alarm, thank goodness, in this motorist to stop and, and pick her up. Absolutely, and again, thank God for Good Samaritans. Pascal Reyes, ladies and gentlemen.